Now we all know Seiko for their production of timepieces, watches, clocks, things of that nature. But you probably didn't know that they dabbled in making consumer electronics like the Seiko S3 personal stereo system from the early 90s. And this is model number KX-14AFQ6, made in Korea by the Kisho or Kisho Corporation of Tokyo, Japan. And I thought when I was looking at this that these uh, buttons here were how you switch to the different features and modes, but you don't. They're just plastic. They don't do anything. They just brag and boast about the various features it supposedly supports. And then over here it shows you how much tape length you have left. And if we go up here, it says uh, cassette recorder, super sensitive tuner, monitor speaker, and a condenser microphone. And then down here we have a three band equalizer. You've got your volume and tuning control, your headphones, stereo headphones jack, FM stereo indicator light, and a speaker control. This can run off of its internal speaker, which is actually right on the back here. It's not very loud, quite tinny, but if you don't want to use headphones I guess it'll work and then you have your tuner here and it is very sensitive I can pick up a station that I can't pick up in any of my other radios but the one complaint is that it's extremely hard to get into and tune into the proper station you have to it's not very you just barely move this thing and it'll skip right over the the frequency you're trying to tune into so it definitely requires a bit of practice to tune into the correct frequency and channel without having to play around with it for a few minutes and it does have a built-in condenser microphone because this does support cassette tapes you just open this up here and this is the inside of the mechanism the tape and the tape controls are located up here you have record play rewind fast forward and stop if I press play the tape head does come down we've also got a modes let's just switch for the radio off or tape playback and recording mode and then if we want to put on the radio we just switch to the right and then an FM mono FM stereo and an AM switch here and this does have a 3 volt DC input power jack so if you don't want to use double A's which this one's actually missing its compartment you can just run this off of D, uh, a using an AC to DC adapter and it also has an external stereo microphone jack which is a three and a half millimeter jack so you can just use one of those regular uh, computer microphones to record to cassette tape it's quite chunky it's not as small as some of the Sony Walkmans and when this was new obviously it would have had a battery compartment but it also would have had a hand strap that went somewhere around here the AM tuner as well as the FM tuner are very good but the AM tuner is a surprisingly wide band and it, with the help of the free band equalizer you can really make AM music stations sound really really good and closer to a lower quality FM station so to demonstrate the tuner I'm going to take this patch cable and just plug it into its headphone output and then connect this up to my camcorder's microphone input so we can do a direct quality test Offering the biggest, best way to cruise on any Norwegian ship to any destination with a little something called Norwegian's Perfect 10, where you get 10% cash back. Okay, so that was a demonstration of the FM stereo reception. It does pretty well, but let's go over and switch this into AM and plug in the microphone, the speaker now. And uh, it's just a better product. Right, I'll get geeked out as a consumer just for a minute because cool. I'm a big fitness. The company has had a lot of issues with a lot of returns. I continue to love the product. It should taper off late in the day, high 70. Sunday's nice sunshine, breezy, a little cool though, high just 63. And Monday we'll have sunshine mixing with clouds. Now 
when you use the built-in speaker on this thing, even on AM, it sounds terrible. But if you don't have any way of listening to this without headphones, it's better than nothing. Okay, obviously I don't think we need a patch cable to tell that this is not running at the correct speed. Okay, let's stop that before it ruins my cassette tape. Okay, one last thing before I take this apart and attempt to change out the belts. Let's do a test of the internal microphone. I'll just take it because it lets you monitor the audio from this microphone through its headphone output. That's what I'll do. I'll just hook up the patch cable and avoid recording it to a cassette tape at all. Okay, that's uh, obviously right away there's something wrong with the microphone on this tape. Uh, it sounds like it's uh, something's definitely wrong with it. It shouldn't sound this uh, over-modulated, and I'm not overdriving my camcorder's microphone input. This is how it sounds with the built-in speaker, too. Okay, here we are now on the inside of it. Took a bit of uh, doing to get this apart. There's two screws that are on this tape mechanism door, and you have to pry the door off to get that off. And then on the bottom of the unit, this just pulls away, but it's a bit tricky because they get stuck on these rotary controls up here for the volume and the tuner. But we have our ferrite rod, AM antenna, a tape head here, which probably could do with a cleaning. And somebody definitely used this for quite a bit of tape playback. And then up here we have the uh, spring for one of the battery terminals. And the belt and the flywheel is located right under here. And that is not going to be an easy task to repair or replace. And you can see the, the cause of our problems with the cassette deck. That belt should not be that loose, and this one's pretty loose too. And no wonder that speaker sounds so bad. It's rated at two tenths of a watt at eight ohms. And finally, if you do a quick search of it online, you don't get much information. You get a few eBay listings, and no real information. The only one I've found is from this website that only posts photographs of it and not actual information so I'm gonna go ahead and label this as from 1987 just based off of what I assume is a date code however feel free to correct me if I'm wrong